Configuring network load balancing on Linux is significantly different to configuring network load balancing on Windows. On Linux, network load balancing is split into two separate server components. The first is one or more servers that actually run the load balancing software. The second is the nodes that actually form the cluster, for example, web servers. In this example, we're going to configure a network load balanced Apache cluster. On the clients, we edit the sysctl.conf file to allow the kernel to accept the sort of traffic from the forwarder that will allow us to use network load balancing. These changes can either be written directly to the kernel or will be active the next time you boot. It's not necessary to install any extra packages on the web server. All we need to do is write those changes to the kernel and this is done by entering the command sysctl-p. Because I'm using Ubuntu, I must preface this command using sudo. The next step to take is to configure the network interfaces to accept the load balanced traffic. This is done by configuring a special auxiliary interface with the address of the cluster and then ensuring that our normal interface address, in this case uh, 192.168.15.45, is also configured properly. So you can see that the address of our cluster is 192.168.15.42. Now we shift across to the load balancer itself, and there's several steps that we need to take to configure this particular computer. By default, the modules needed to support IP virtual server are not included in the kernel. So you actually have to edit the modules file and add the list of modules, which you can see in front of you, to the kernel. These will load up and then IP virtual services will be able to work. Once you've configured modules, every time that you reboot the load balancing computer, it will automatically support load balancing. These modules can also be added at runtime by using the mod probe command. Once the modules are loaded, the next step is to edit sysctl on the load balancing computer and enable it to do IP version 4 forwarding. So what will happen is that when a request comes into the virtual server address, this will allow the request to be forwarded to the two nodes of the load balanced cluster. This is a fairly straightforward step and it only requires uncommenting an existing line. The only package that you need to install on the load balancers is the LDirectorD package. This is included with pretty much every distribution. Once you have installed the LDirectorD package, you need to can create the LDirectorD.cf file. As you can see this file in front of you, this file actually specifies how often the load balancer checks each of the nodes. So you set a check timeout and a check interval. A check interval is every two seconds. And the way that this works with a web server is that it sends a request off to the web server for a particular file. If that file is found and it has the specified contents, in this case the file name is director.html and the contents are I am alive, that node is seen as being up. And what happens is this check will go on and on and if a node goes down in the load balanced cluster, only the active nodes will be used and when the node comes back up that will be node will be re-added to the cluster and that's the advantage of load balancing is it allows you to add extra nodes and pull down nodes and have the cluster automatically reconfigure because all clients are addressing the virtual address the final step in configuring the network load balancer is to configure the network interfaces to actually accept traffic on the virtual address in this case 192.168.15.42 this is done by editing the uh, interfaces file in the etc network directory. And once this is done, you can get ready to actually start the daemon. And this is done by issuing the command, as you can see there. And what I've done is I've put it in debug mode, so we can actually see it work. I'm using the sudo command because I'm on Ubuntu. And that starts, and what you can see there is that it's actually found each of the two nodes. It's, it's sent that request. It's found a response OK. So what it's doing now is it's accepting traffic on that particular virtual IP address. And then what it'll do is it'll actually redirect it to either one of those nodes that I've configured earlier. So what we'll do now is we'll actually check that that's working. By running a Windows computer 
And when you see the Windows computer running, what we'll do, here we, we go, we'll load up the virtual server's IP address. And what we're going to do, once we connect to the virtual server IP, is we're going to reload. Now, the way I've actually got it so that you can tell the difference is I've actually put a directory called node A, and you can see it's just switched to node B, node A, and by just refreshing, constantly refreshing, it'll go to one node or the other, see so it's just changed again. And that way you can actually tell that network load balancing is working.